So I'm trying to track down a problem with my 91 460. It's an RV. Um, basically the problem was is a uh, loss of power when it when it basically barely could crawl up a hill. Start, you know, an idle would okay and it would uh a light throttle was fine, but as soon as you put a load on it, it would lose power, die, sputter, stuff like that. Um, and it was kind of intermittent, but it progressively got worse and worse and worse to the point where it just stopped starting altogether. Check engine light wouldn't come on. Uh, code reader wouldn't uh, communicate with the ECU. So I looked around and uh, it, it threw me a code 96 and a 53. 96 is the fuel pump circuit. 53, I think, was... I don't remember exactly what that was. But the uh, basically pointed me to the fuel system, fuel relay things, ECU relay. <clears throat> Check those out. Fuel pump was... Um, or sorry, fuel relay was uh, waterlogged. And severe water damage in it. And so we placed that, figured that was gonna do it. Checked the wires, wires looked okay going to it. Um, fired it up, <clears throat> tried to fire it up when it start. Both the relays, the ECU relay and the uh, fuel pump relay made all kinds of weird noises, like they're having a party going on. Uh, and then all of a sudden, just nothing. No power to either, nothing. So I pulled the ECU, this guy, and uh, what I was looking for is the capacitors. Everybody talks about these capacitors, you know, see if they go bad, right? It doesn't look bad to me. It's not leaking, it's not swollen. I'm not sure what all that white dust shit is everywhere, but um, here's the other one. Some people have three, this one only has two. But as you see, they look pretty good. They're not swollen, it's not leaking. I mean, the top of the board looks, you know, reasonably okay, except this white powder everywhere, you know. I mean, I'm not an expert by any means, so if you see something that I missed. But something decided, oh, I looked at the pins here. You know, these pins looked okay. I don't see any corrosion. I don't see any sign of water damage. None are broken or missing. You know, I mean, looked all right. Again, I'm not an expert, but just overall, the board looked okay. I didn't see anything broken. I didn't see anything too bad, except this white powder. But I saw this connector here. Or I don't even know if it's a connector. I don't think anything's connected to it, really. This this tab, whatever, right? Anyway, and all this white powder, right? See all this stuff? So I decided to pull the back of the ECU. Everybody talks about these capacitors, right? Hopefully, people take people take the time <clears throat> and actually pull the back off, too, because here's what I found. Look at that. Oh, look at that problem. So there we go. Yeah. Looks like someone had a barbecue up here. I have no idea how that happened. <clears throat> Looks like pretty severe water damage, hey? I mean, that's my guess, obviously, right? Just don't know how, how the water could get in. I mean, obviously it must have gotten on this side. That's where it looks like it starts at, in the back. So somehow the water got in the front? Fuck, I have no idea how that happened. Because I believe there's just a rubber boot that goes around this. Anyway, yeah, because the plug, this plug goes to the firewall. So the ass end, this end, where the water damage is, is inside the cab, which is really strange. It's up and under the dash. There must be a leak coming through, somehow running down. Who the fuck knows? But, <laughs> whatever it is, yeah, there's your problem. So um, people talk about capacitors all day, and I'm sure that they cause problems. But definitely pull the back of your ECU off to double check, even if you have good capacitors, because like I said, front side looks great, relatively good, except all the white specs, which I guess is a corrosion or whatever, but the capacitors don't look bad. So time for a new ECU, and uh, stop the water damage from coming in, the water from coming in and causing damage, whatever. Yeah, so if you have any fuel issues and you, you know, don't automatically just go for the fuel pump. I can go for the electrical stuff first, just because it's easier. It's easier to pull this thing out than to swap your uh, fuel tank or your fuel pump and your fuel tank. Cheaper too, probably. Well, maybe not, but either way, this took me about 10 minutes to pull out. I'm sure uh, it's going to take me a lot longer if I had to replace the fuel pump and the fuel tank. So there you go. 
knowing my own luck, I'm still going to have to replace the fuel pump with a fuel tank. But this is definitely a problem right here.